Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. From Jacksonville, Florida, it is truly winter because I am looking at the white pelicans right now. I can't show them to you because you'll never see them. But when the white pelicans with the yellow beaks show up here in Jacksonville, Florida, it is truly winter time. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do some fishing, hopefully some catching, and I'm going to do a little bit of anchoring or anchor tutorial, I guess you could say. I've got some subscribers that are very interested and they need to get with the program on their boats. But I'm here to catch the tide and hopefully Mr. Black Drum. Third cast. Third cast. Top water trout. Let me get the net. Third cast. Do that or a god dang bluefish. What is it? What is it? What is it? That's god dang bluefish. I thought it was a trout. Ah. Well, it's top of water anyhow. So, the green scourge on the third cast. I had a feeling. All right, third cast. On the top water. Oh, he's going back. God, I was hoping it was a tear out a gator. Well, it's been so cold lately, especially out there in the panhandle, I think, where they get the fiddlers. So we haven't had any filler crabs, but they said possibly Monday. And that's good because I got a charter on Wednesday. So I didn't feel like float rig fishing. I'm all out on a pursuit for these drum. There we go, Mr. Drum. On the Daiwa B stick. some guys behind me so I gotta I gotta stealth this fish oh yeah I can tell it's a nice digging drum dead shrimp oh yeah here's dinner I'm gonna hurry up and get down there again. Come on. Oh yeah. Gotta hurry up and get another one. There we go. That's a nice keeper. All right. Let me put him in the fish bag. sitting so precariously on this spot and here comes another giant ship to wake the living hell out of us sitting here or us me me that's all i care about is me here comes another giant ship i was just about to pull the damn anchor Keep it away from them damn croakers. That's all I'm getting bit by. But 
Exactly what I wanted. I needed one more at least. I got one and I wanted another one. <laughs> there we go. Boy, that took a while. I had to come out to the Jetty Rocks and the croakers rooting me out of house and home. So there's number two. Alrighty, folks. Time to take a break from this absolute gangbuster fishing today. I mean, it's such a bluebird day, it's ridiculous. What I wanted to show you, and it's just amazing how nobody has picked up on this. It's, I find it absolutely amazing. You know, you got your fancy gel coat boat, you know, your, your 35 contender, whatever, and you maybe don't have the easy button on the front. Maybe you don't have a trolling motor and you do anchor. Okay, well, for me, I picked this up like a lot of things that I did on my boat because it's aluminum. Let me look at my rod. I got a line out just to see if there's any whiting out here. I picked a lot of stuff up from those Australians and New Zealanders. Man, they know, they, they got it down pat, man. I'm telling you. Uh, they do things that you would never see at the biggest boat shows in the United States. Hopefully you can see this. There's my chain on my, what I call my galvanized Batman hook. All right, there's my galvanized Batman hook. Plus I got it in a big roller. You know, I used to pick this stuff up out of the water and lay it on the deck of the boat and then pick it up and deploy it. Well, having this sprit on the front is just absolutely a game changer if you're an anchoring guy. But, see this stuff? See this? That is a tight weave of uh, wire sheathing. Now, this stuff is the absolute top of the line. Now, I found some other stuff on Amazon, Amazon that's truly for wires to go through. But my chain is in here. Look at this. Here's my chain. You can hear it. That's my chain. 20 foot of stainless chain. Alright, let me get this out. So there you go, with a big old ungodly loop on the end to protect it from me yanking the crap out of it. The reason I do this is because in Australia, they got aluminum boats. And aluminum boats, you don't want to hear this chain tinkling around all the time. Alright? So when it hits the deck, it's not making an absolute bunch of noise. I got no way to hold the camera up here, so I'm trying to do my best with a, a pole. So that is a super tight weave. Now the stuff I've got on my Amazon Tools of the Trade page that I did find on Amazon and I did buy because I set up a second anchor with stainless chain. I've got a couple of these anchors and I put this anchor sheathing on it. And what that does is it keeps from scraping up your boat. and. When chain is just laying, it's not making a bunch of noise. It's not making a bunch of noise on your gel coat. Just like I don't want it making a whole bunch of noise when I pull it in and, and it hits on the aluminum boat, okay? But what I also did, and I've shown, uh-oh, I got a fish on. I'm sure it's, it's just a bonnet head shark or something. It's going to be a bonnet head. While I'm trying to show you, this is going to be a bonnet. Everything's better with a brown bonnet on it. Yeah, it's 
gonna be a bonnet head, I think. That's all that's out here in the sand. While you're looking for whiting, I'd be surprised if this was anything but. Yeah, it's a bonnet. Head shark. Okay, I got no way of even. Good. He just he just popped it. Good. I didn't want to have to mess with him. If you don't know what a bonnet head is, people call them shovel heads. That's not their name. Their name is bonnet head shark, Atlantic bonnet head, and they're a distant long distant cousin to uh, you know hammerheads so then I have this this is called the grappler this is one of those aluminum uh, bendable anchors okay and you notice always even on my galvanized one we I run a shackle up here and then I use wire Okay, and I do a haywire twist, so this will snap off and yank it from the top. These damn things are hard to get super stuck. I just anchored and drug this thing inside the jetty rocks, and I just pulled it like it was... Oh, geez, there goes the bat fun. All right, hold on. All right, well, isn't that why we have cell phones? So you can be in the absolute middle of something, and it starts ringing, where... If it was the good old days, the phone would be ringing at the house, somebody would be leaving you a message, and you don't even care. What was I talking about? This is the grapnel, or grap grappler anchor. It's the same thing as the old Mighty Mites, except this one is super HD. I got it for a song at my bait shop. It was hanging there for like ever and a day in the bait shop. He bought it from somebody. But what I wanted to show you is a different kind of sheathing that I've got 20 foot of chain in and this is like a cloth type sheathing. Let's see if you can see this and I will show you the difference. I'm experimenting with this. This is like a canvasy nylon cloth and then this. See the difference? This is like a weave. I've got stuff like this on my Amazon Tools of the Trade page because I found it on there and I've got all those galvanized uh, grapnel hook anchors all the way from 5, uh, 5, 12, and then 18. I run an 18. All right, so there's the difference, if you can see. One's cloth-like and one's like a mesh. But I use this because I don't want, I don't want this making a bunch of noise either. And I'm going to kind of show you. All right. So let's say I want to throw my anchor over the side. There you go. Doesn't make any noise, right? And then I retrieve it. Okay. I'm trying to point the camera. I go to retrieve it. And the only clink you're going to hear is the shackle. This was a total experiment. I just wanted to see how this stuff works. Uh, my chain isn't big. I'll show you my chain. But this is what they call two inch. This was two inch. Now here's when you'll be pulling your anchor, right? And you'd be running that dang chain up and down your gel coat or your rubber rail. I can say that. I've had, I've had all kinds of boats, right? So, you'd be running this up your bow rail. Now you get to right here, and you bring your anchor in. Okay, it does stay kind of wet. Damn, I can't keep the camera going here. It does stay kind of wet, but like I said, I'm just experimenting with this. The real true stuff is this stuff, okay? 
but you got to size it for your chain you got to size this for your chain i believe what i got in here is like 5 16th link there you go you can see it there's the there's the size of the, the lengths of mine and it's sort of a it's sort of a bear to do this because what you got to do is you've got to take your chain right and you got to put a long string on it with like a uh, something to fish it through you got to fish it through all this okay it's good to have two people it's good to have somebody to help you i do it all with nobody because i use vices to hold it tight and you fish this through with like a screwdriver or something then you pull a cord through some like paracord you tie that off and then you start running your chain through okay and you pull it and you squish it and you pull it and you squish it on so what it does is it really on this doesn't do it but on the other one it makes like a chinese finger when it gets really tight so i just wanted to show that um I had a subscriber or two that we're trying to set up. Okay, we're trying to set up with a good anchor system. And uh, so that, that's the anchor sheathing and that's the two anchors that I've been using. The one up here, the big galvanized 18 pounder, that is my do-all, river, everything. But let me tell you something, there ain't, <coughs> excuse me, there is no perfect anchor. I used to use the Danforth style fluke anchors and if you're fishing offshore and you go to drag it up where we just drag it up with the boat and let it ski up behind the boat or use an anchor retrieval ball right when you're out in deep water those have a tendency that if they're really stuck it'll wrench them right around and this big bar here this one you're not wrenching that big bar. You are not bending that. You are not going to bend it. So actually, that is referred to as a reef and rock anchor. Eh. I've used it offshore. I use it at the jetty rocks. I use it in a river. It holds with a lot of chain. I'm running 20 foot of chain. And it holds with a lot of chain. But... Get, us, get, get this undone. Um, it holds with a bunch of chain, but at the same time, it doesn't hold for like ever. You know, and hardly ever are you pulling up gobs of mud. What I like about it, that, that reef and rock anchor is, is that it's sort of, it holds you, but it can come out easy all right and then of course i built the trip system into it the one on the bow has the same trip system you run your chain and you wire it you get yourself some monel or stainless wire and you do a big haywire twist so if you ever had to you bring it real tight up into the boat and you power against if you're hung this one's supposed to bend out i haven't bent it really since but on that one, it ain't gonna bend. So, and I'll show you something else while we're here. As you can see through all the shadows, this is my toolkit. I got it right up here. I have videos about this already, so I'm just reiterating what I've already, just what I'm already talking to. I get this at Harbor Freight. That'll last me years and years and years stainless steel lock wire i got this up here and i keep a little crescent wrench and i keep some cutters and needle nose right up here right where i'm doing my business with the with the anchor so i don't have to go hunting up anything if that wire breaks which you want that wire to break and every once, it'll, every once in a while, that wire will break just from stress pulling it a, a million times. And you forget about it. You go to 
pull your anchor and it's hanging off the bow. Well, I just climb up there, pull it in, and I just jump up here and I rewire it. Same thing I would do with this one. Same thing as I would do with this one. But as I said, this is an experiment. I'm just checking this material out. But that weaved stuff is the best. And if you want the highest grade of possible, which what I have on my Amazon Tools of the Trade page isn't, I will leave a link below to where you can get this particular stuff that I got right now on this anchor. That is the absolute top of the line. Absolute top of the line. Chain sheathing. So that's it. I think I'm going to go home and clean some fish. Been out since early this morning because I got to beat that Navy traffic. Well, I hate that Navy traffic. Let's put it that way. So, um, caught some drum. Not a big eventful day, but I did what I wanted. They didn't have any fiddler crabs or nothing at the bait shop. That's what I was really counting on because just using shrimp is fine if they're chewing like no tomorrow, but it's a lot better to use some fiddlers or something because then you pick up a sheep's head or something too, of course. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And I know 99.999% .99 of you have never seen an anchor cover, anchor sheathing. And the reason that they really do it down in Australia, New Zealand, is they have what they call drum anchor winches, where all this doesn't, doesn't sit in a ball in a compartment. Down in that boat, they have a, a spool with a motor attached to it. And they literally roll their line and their chain right onto this spool and it's called a drum winch Dave Marciano which they'll never show you on Wicked Tuna has one on his brand new boat. what was the what was his brand new boat's name Thunderbolt or something like that he's got one on the bow of his, his new tuna boat on Wicked Tuna but they never show you the bow so you never see it he literally had the guys from Australia come to his dock and help him install it. and one of the better drum winches around is a Lone Star and that's from Australia so I'll put all the links below and all that good stuff so thanks for watching and I'll catch you later